Level 3s are for chumps in today's Grand Archive deck profile. We're going to be looking at a Fire Allen build, a little bit of a quirky different build today. Let's jump right in. What's up everyone, it's Dan with Main Deck, and I'm back with another Grand Archive deck profile for you guys today. Today we are going over, this is definitely a weirder one, okay? So we've shown some very good, um, pretty high level competitive decks for a little bit. I think the number one thing I want to make sure that you walk away with this on this deck is that this is definitely for the people who want to try something a little quirkier, a little less consistent, but a very fun deck to play nonetheless with some surprising power behind it. So today we are looking at a Fire uh, Tamer build and not actually going to level 3 Sylvie at all. I'm going to start right now by looking at the material deck with you guys and you will notice right away there is no level 3 Sylvie. Our whole plan is to get to Allen and win the game at level 2. The big advantage we're going to have in this deck is that we do not need to spend cards to get to level 3 to finish the game. We are very happy with Allen's level 2 effect in here. So let's look at some of these things. We'll start with the material deck. Of course, we are playing this under fire, so we have the Spirit of Fire in here. Sylvie level 1 is going to be a level 1 of choice. Actually, I've been toying with some interesting ideas of going from Mage to Allen, some other things. So you might see something like that in a future deck profile, but there are some interesting things you can you can toy around with in this game. But for now, we're sticking with straight Tamer on this build and just enjoying our animal friends. Uh, and of course, we go to Allen level 2. So before we get too far, we do want to talk about what Allen level 2 does and why we choose Allen level 2 in this deck. Um, instead of just going with Sylvie level 2 or something. Allen level 2 does two things quite nicely. Number one, his Glimpse 3 is the deepest dig we can find in our uh, current setup of champion choices to help us try and find Erupting Rhapsody. And Erupting Rhapsody is really how you're going to finish the game in this deck. This card is crazy powerful. It is going to be the centerpiece of the deck. It's the card you want to see every single game that you play you want to find this card so alan lets us glimpse three which helps us dig down to it and if you find an erupting an erupting rhapsody in there you are going to get to put it in your hand um you also will have some other hits that you can get with that level uh with that glimpse three looking for a harmony or a melody card but obviously erupting rhapsody is really the one you find unless you need a melody to turn on the harmony part of it the other thing that alan does is he gives you a second bonus of as long as you control two or more animal or beast allies he's going to get plus two level, which is actually quite good. The biggest flaw is, well, I think Tamer has a few little things that are tough to work with right now um, that I think will be a lot better in set two when the card pool's a little bigger, but one of them is that it's working with this pride mechanic. Your best uh, allies in the deck you cannot actually attack with until you hit a higher level. And Alan having this built-in plus two level without having to spend the cards to get to level three um, that is actually very powerful and that gives you, that hits these thresholds, these breakpoints that you need to, to be able to attack with things like your Blazing Direwolf. So we'll talk about all that in a little bit. Um, the next cards in the material deck are just our draw suite. Uh, we are playing Grand Crusader's Ring, of course. Um, we are playing Wind Resonance Bobble and this is really just in here because a, there's a lot of wind in the metagame right now. Relying on the power of Beseech the Winds and, and like the Infusion Lorraine list we posted. These are very, very powerful decks. Um, and I've just been enjoying slotting a Wind Resonance Bobble. It has felt very good to have this in my main board material deck in a lot of games. Um, I also currently have a Bobble of Abundance. I think this is very much a flex slot. If you have another piece of tech you would rather play in here, um, you know, you can go ahead and swap this for whatever you think works with your metagame. Maybe you want to put in a Fire Bobble because a lot of people are playing Fire in your local metagame. That's totally cool too. Abundance is a free card draw on the turn you you need to go for the game and you need one more card or something. So that's really what it's there for. Um, it works against anything, so it's fairly flexible. Orb of Regret. This is a clutch card. I would not build this deck without Orb of Regret. Tamer is relying on so many things to come together that Orb of Regret is going to help you find the cards you need. Um, it's going to help you filter out cards that are less useful for the cards, hopefully the cards you want to see instead. Very clutch card. I would definitely try and play this card if possible. We have a couple of our Tamer specific things here. We have Beast Bond Ears. Gives you the plus one level. So the key to keep in mind with this is that Pride 5 is what we're going to be trying to hit on our Blazing Direwolf. And the plus one level along with Alan's total level of four, if you have the two animals or beasts in play, of course, Direwolf's one of those. So you just need one other one. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, that will give you Pride 5 in conjunction with the Beast Bond Ears. So you'll put this out if you are unable to hold down one of your other level boosters um, and it will get you there. 
Beastbon Boots, this is very much a little techie choice in here, but this is a way to give yourself an extra turn against Rai. Um, you can force him to try and kill you, to, and you have to you pop the boots in response to gain the Spell Shroud when he tries to Arcane Blast you or something. Um, and then, boom, you bought yourself another turn in a lot of situations, unless he's, he's got a, an Arcane Elemental um, option or something. Um, so it's really just in there for that, um, and it does its job, you know, when you need it. Uh, Melodious Flute, this is a critical card as well. I would not build this deck without this because Melodious Flute lets you late in the game take a floating memory you have sitting in your discard pile or something or even a card from uh, your memory if you need to and it lets you basically act as if that card or that floating memory card was a harmony that you needed that turn to turn on your Erupting Rhapsody's Harmonize effect. Um, uh, excuse me, it acts as a melody. Um, it also does give you a plus one level boost, which can help you hit those pride amounts if you hadn't had a chance to play Beast Bond Ears or something, which can let you just get that to that kind of threshold you need to deal enough damage to close the game out. Now, the last two cards in here, I think um, these are maybe a little weirder. Crystal Empowerment. Uh, I'm still I'm still working with this. I feel like I actually still haven't found the right opportunity to play this and have it be very good. Um, but it is actually a pretty decent option in this deck. I, it, I think this is possibly a flex slot as well. But what it does is, number one, of course, lets you get that pride amount in conjunction with Alan um, to be able to uh, attack with all of your things. Um, but your level also is going to increase the damage you deal with Erupting Rhapsody. You want to be doing a fair amount of math with this deck when you're going into the closing turn and figuring out how much, how many cards you need and how much damage you need to deal and what your level needs to be. Because um, ultimately this Erupting Rhapsody is going to deal level damage to your opponent's face. Um, and so this does give you a little plus two damage boost on that as well as possibly hitting pride amounts. And then this here, Channeling Stone, this is not a card that gets played a lot. Um, this was a late inclusion into testing this deck as I found that multiple times I was getting to the final turn and going, I am one card short of killing you. And if I instead had a floating memory that could have put in this channeling stone, that would act as having two cards for the purpose of that turn, as opposed to even like Grand Crusader Ring just giving you a single card. Um, and that would make all the difference on those turns. So this has been a kind of a fun little techie card that you don't see a whole lot um, that actually can do quite a bit of work. So again, this is a place where you want to be doing your math going into your turns here. Um, so let's talk about the main deck and then how we're winning the game. Of course, as I mentioned, the number one thing we're doing to close the game out here is Erupting Rhapsody. But the big thing with this deck is that you want to just be taking advantage of what Tamer can do, which is putting out threats and punching the opponent. Because if all we're going to do is Erupting Rhapsody to kill them, you probably want to just be playing Rai instead. Um, Mage is going to do this kind of thing a lot better. It's not like Erupting Rhapsody has any specific class it is tied to. Um, so the advantage of Tamer is that you are going to be posing a threat on two fronts. You're going to be forcing your opponent to respond to your board of beasts and your, and your buff counters, and you're going to be attacking your opponent for a bunch of damage with things like Embertail Squirrel. Um, and then once your opponent is softened up, it will just take one or two erupting Rhapsodies to kill them, whatever, you know, whatever you can get them to. Um, depends on how much they care about what your board is and, uh, I think a lot of people playing against this deck for the first time won't know quite what the main threats to deal with are, how much they should be focusing on the board versus just trying to take you out. Um, but you, you'll you be surprised if you play this deck how uh, how quickly you'll be able to get to the point where Erupting Rhapsody is just a, a uh, kill shot at them. So what beasts are we playing here? Actually, we're playing quite a few. I've seen a number of other like... Um, Alan or Sylvie, well not Alan, I've seen a number of Sylvie type decks that are going lower on the beast, just playing the highest quality ones. We are playing um, actually a total of six different beasts here and a total copies of 22 different animals or beast cards. Um, we have Woodland Squirrels, Owl Familiar, uh, Grey Wolf, Ember Tail Squirrel. We have two copies of Trusty Steed. I'll talk about all these in just one moment. And of course, four copies of Blazing Direwolf. So Blazing Direwolf, Embertail Squirrel. These are by far your best animals and beasts to play. Embertail Squirrel gives you a pitch outlet to be able to discard your floating memory cards um, and can push a whole lot of damage for cheap. Um, a great target for a buff counter because it's just that much harder to deal with and it's pushing a lot of damage very quickly with no pride requirement. Blazing Direwolf has a massive pride requirement, but one that Alan is up to the challenge of meeting. 
and it can push a crazy amount of damage, dealing six damage on its own to your opponent if you just get in with it directly. It also can on attack clear away an interceptor to help its four damage get through with its on attack uh, trigger. So very powerful card, but you do need to be able to hit that level to deal with it. That's the biggest flaw in this deck is that um, we're, we're juggling not only trying to get harmonies and melodies, but trying to get levels to get our animals and beasts to be able to attack. Uh, well, specifically just this and Grey Wolf are the only pride things we have, but it's really about the Blazing Dire Wolf for the damage here. Um, and at the same time, we are still just trying to deal with, you know, meeting, playing things on the right turn, really, like um, being able to play an animal or beast to get Sylvie's bonus the turn you level to her, having two animals and beasts in play for Alan, um, and having our, you know, our non-animals and beasts like Young Beast Bonder and Energetic Beast Bonder um, in play at the same time. It's it's asking a whole lot of you, um, and that's really the biggest issue. I think in set two, you'll start to see some more Tamer cards that even this out a little bit. For now, the way that we deal with that is we are playing things like Woodland Squirrels. Now, I, do, I never just throw this out turn one and start attacking with it. I, I think actually Woodland Squirrels is best just as a way to turn on Alan's uh, control two or more animals or beasts requirement rather than something that you want to try and push down and just run it into, um, you know, a cleave attack or some kind of board sweeper. Um, I don't, I would only play this early on if I had no other animals or beasts to play and I had already leveled to level one Sylvie. Um, then I guess putting it down as a free 2-2 two -two is fine. Um, but really you just hold on to this, use it as a card to pay for resources until you uh, until you get to the point where you need to put it down to do something like turn Alan on or just get the last little bit of damage in. Um, these woodland squirrels can be kind of surprising when you catch your opponent off guard using something like Song of Nurturing to give the extra plus one damage to them. Again, you do your math. You got to do your math in this deck to make sure you know where your outs are. Um, Al Familiar is just a great early play. Obviously, it doesn't work when you're on turn uh, when you're on level zero because that class bonus is on. There's a class bonus on the glimpse too. Um, but a great play on like Sylvie level one uh, to get a two two that gives you the glimpse too. Again, we're digging. We're trying to find erupting rhapsodies, so we want to play four of this for sure. Gray Wolf just does damage. He's just a he's just a solid. The Pride two is easy to hit. You're gonna have that on level one if you play a Beast Bonder's ears or if you have any sort of Beast Bonder in play. Um, and then on level two, you're, you'll of course have it solid stats for the cost and then trusty steed. So <laughs> trusty steed is the last inclusion. This is a two of, um, this is generally a card that isn't thought to be super strong. Um, but the thing is we've gotten to the point where we ran out of good beasts to play. Um, the other options were uh, rebellious boars who were also as expensive as the dire wolf, but less powerful and had the same pride requirement. And pride is just you know, just that much of a difficulty where it didn't feel like playing the boars was right. And the uh, the other one is the enraged bull and or not the the whatever the bull. There's there's a bull as well who comes into play rested, and I just didn't um, I didn't like that very much, especially with the popularity of Windex in the metagame that can just bounce the bull and then he comes back in rested. He just doesn't seem like he's fast enough to really get the damage in. Trusty Steed is a slightly lower cost than the boars are. Um, does push some damage that turn by getting the plus two to another, you know, your owl familiar or something. Um, and is kind of annoying to get rid of two with the three, the three health. So he's okay. It's okay. It's an okay card. Uh, young beast bonder, absolutely amazing card. Uh, what tamer needed, um, tamer still needs, I think a little bit, but this really helps quite a bit. What I really like to do with young beast bonder, put it into play, put the buff counters on something, you know, make a huge, make your beast huge or make your animal bigger. Um, attack with it, and then you Cremation Ritual the Beast Bonder to get the floating memory into your discard pile. It's already done its job, and now you can use it to pay for going to Alan level 2 or something. Uh, Energetic Beast Bonder, also just, you know, solid. Um, people don't want to kill it, but its stats are pretty decent. Uh, gives you the plus 1 level, which helps you attack with your Grey Wolf early on. So great, um, great turn 1 play. Love playing this on turn 1. Uh, just to get it out and be ready to attack with a Grey Wolf next turn unless the opponent decides to deal with it. And then if they do, then you can just use it um, after, not to get to level one, but you can use it after you get to level one to get to level two or something. Um, Song of Nurturing is really just in here because you need melodies to be able to turn on Erupting Rhapsody's Harmonize effect. Um, but it is a pretty decent little play against fire decks for dealing with uh, the burn spells they'll be throwing at your allies. And you can catch your opponent off guard with that plus one damage buff. It's part of your math that you need to be thinking about every time you're trying to win the game. Um, Ember Song, 
is really the melody you want to see. Two damage to an ally, gets rid of interceptors, and then buffs an ally you control by plus two. Um, very cheap. That's the big thing is that uh, you, you want these things to be as cheap as possible. So two costs, not too bad. But this is where things like the channeling stone come in. Once you get to the end of the game, you're going to be coming up with these turns where you need to cast a melody and then like be able to cast two erupting rhapsodies. You're already asking for a nine card hand at that point. I'm telling you guys, the channeling stone is a special card in this deck. It is a, it is a special piece of tech that will help you win games. It's a very, very cool little piece um, to be aware of. And Erupting Rhapsody. So if you haven't seen this card before, this card is one of the stronger cards in set one. Um, it is banish any amount of fire element cards from your graveyard. Your champion gets plus one level until the end of turn for each card banished this way, which of course helps you get to your pride amounts when you need to. And then the Harmonize. If you've activated a melody card this turn, choose any amount of units and deal level damage split among them. Usually you're just targeting your opponent's champion and blasting them in the face. It is a skill, so it does not get affected by spell shroud. Be aware of that. Your opponent might try to spell shroud this. They can't. It is a skill. They they can't they still hear the song. They're still gonna hear the song and it's still gonna blow them up. Um awesome, awesome card. You wanna see uh two of it every game, basically. You wanna see two copies of this every single game to have your best chance of winning. Cremation Ritual, I've debated between going to four on this quite a bit. Um, it's been fine at three. It's a really good card, though. I could totally see it at four. Um, it's Sacrifice an Ally you control, draw two cards. Great with your Young Beast Bonder and your Energetic Beast Bonder. Make sure you attack with them first and then sack them, get that Floating Memory set up. This is another place where Squirrel is a useful card if you just need to turn this into some different cards in the mid-game as you're like trying to find your... Your kill turn, Woodland Squirrels, doesn't cost any resources. Pop them down, attack with them, and then sack them to the Cremation Ritual. Works great with Al Familiar, who already did his on-enter effect, so he's already to go. Trust Even Trusty Steed can do a little damage that turn, uh, pump something up, attack, and then the next turn, you know, attack again, turn them into a Cremation Ritual or something. You're getting your value out of these things there, um, but definitely really good just for getting your floating memory in the discard pile. Shout at your pets. So the big thing about this deck compared to like a mage deck is that you don't have a ton of ways of just pitching your cards um, and drawing other cards. We're not playing Hasty Messenger um, in Cemetery Sentry just because we need room for animals and beasts to make sure our Alan is turned on. So instead we're running things like Shout at Your Pets. Um, again, another level booster, help you get to five to get that pride. Um, and then lets you discard a card to draw a card. You just always want to be discarding a floating memory card with this um, as much as possible. So Young Beast Bonder, Energetic Beast Bonder, or Another card you'll discard with Shout at Your Pets is going to be Tempered Steel. Tempered Steel doesn't actually do anything in this deck. You cannot target a weapon you control un, uh, unless your opponent gives you a, a an Excalibur, I think, Curse Sword. I think then you could target it, but that has never come up for me. Um, Tempered Steel is just here to be discarded to Shout at Your Pets or Creative Shock. Um, you you basically just need to find or, or sorry ember tail squirrel that's a that's a big one too you just need to have one of these cards and then pitch it for the floating memory it's strictly in here for floating memory purposes um, to be able to activate these effects and then use that as floating memory later so um, it is not a great card in here at all uh, but in set two I'm hoping we have some more options to play with instead creative shock uh, this is a card you see in most red decks they play it it's Really in this deck, you want to play it early on, but you don't really want to see it past some of the earlier turns because it's just going to kind of take up too much of your time. But it's a great turn one play. Draw two, discard a card, discard your Tempered Steel, um, discard a Beast Bonder if you, if you have to, just to get your floating memory set up. Uh, increasing Danger. I love this card. It is just going to fill you with cards to use. It does give your opponent a card as well, but again, our goal is hopefully just to be able to blast the opponent before they can get a win with their stuff, so we don't usually mind too much. Um, I, I like to see as many of these as possible. It also is a card just like Creative Shock um, and Shout at Your Pets is a card that just puts fire element cards in the discard pile because, of course, we need to banish them for Erupting Rhapsody uh, in order to get that level boost. And then finally, Smack with Flute. This is just a really solid card in Tamer decks. It is an attack, lets you sometimes knock out an Interceptor. It gives you the level boost to turn your pride on, and it has Floating Memory. Um, so you can use it to, again, get to your Allen level 2 freely, or get a Channeling Stone out late in the game, or something like that. Um, uh, just another source of 1 damage. Make sure you keep that in mind. It, you know, it, Again, you're always doing your math in this deck, trying to figure out how to beat them. The one thing that is missing in this main board, depending on your metagame, is some copies of... 
uh, of anything like Spurn to Ash that would be able to get rid of a Nullifying Lantern if your opponent's playing that. Obviously, the thing about Erupting Rhapsody decks is you are cold to Nullifying Lantern. Um, I would say that's completely a meta choice. You can sideboard uh, Spurn to Ash if you, if you think that you might see uh, Nullifying Lantern, but you're not sure. But if everyone in your metagame is playing Nullifying Lantern in their main board, you can absolutely play Spurn to Ash in. I would just pull out like the Tempered Steels, um, maybe like, you know, you could do a copy of Woodland Squirrels. You could do, you could do the Steeds and, and stuff like, it's just, I don't want to lower these too much. The big thing about Tamer is that, you know, you need this amount of animals and beasts. You need your Clutch Beast Bonders. You need your uh, Harmony and Melody package in this deck. And then you still need all the other good cards and the glue cards that just kind of make everything work. So it is a little tough sometimes. Um, but if you really want to, I would say maybe like take out two Tempered Steels and a Woodland Squirrels if you want to put in like three Spurn to Ash in the main board. I think that's totally reasonable too. So um, that is the deck profile. That is the Fire Allen deck. Uh, again, it is a very fun deck. It is, I don't think that this is necessarily going to shake the metagame up, but if you're looking for a way to play a Tamer deck and kind of catch people off guard and have a lot of fun with some big erupting Rhapsodies and consistent Direwolf attacks, I'd say this is a deck to look at, to try out, to toy with. And if you do enjoy this deck and you have any changes that you think you want to make to it that make it any better, of course, let me know what you think goes better in this deck in the comments down below. Let me know how it goes. And if there are any decks you do want to see profiled on the channel as well, we're going to be profiling tons and tons of Grand Archive decks as we go along. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments if there's a deck you want to see profiled in a future deck profile here, and I'd be happy to get that for you. Um, that's going to do it, though, for today's Grand Archive deck profile. I hope you guys did enjoy this one. And uh, make sure you do, I don't say this too often, but make sure you do like and subscribe uh, on the channel because that really helps us out. We are getting a lot of outreach for Grand Archive right now, which is really awesome. Love growing the game. Love seeing all you guys joining us for the journey. Um, and hope to see you guys in the very next video. That's going to do it for today. Take care, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching another Main Deck video. Main Deck is sponsored by JDubs Sports Cards and Gaming. Visit jwwcards.com and by our amazing patrons. Get exclusive content and other cool perks on the Main Deck Patreon. And uh, hey, while you're here, I bet you'd like one of these videos. Go ahead, click one. I know you're gonna love it.